Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 on Channels Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A quick reminder of our main stories now. Commotion in Eder Town at burial of the first executive governor of Washington State, Isaac Adeleke. Angry mourners attack Governor Aragoshela's aide at the scene. Fresh suicide attack kills four people in Medjugorje, Borno State. Another attack involving three female suicide bombers foiled by vigilantes. Internally displaced persons in Agatu community of Benue State return to their homes. President Francois Hollande and other politicians back leading candidates in the French presidential elections. Manuel Macron. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website at channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device. Just log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from your respective stores. Having the Channel TV and Channel 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature though, so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app. Then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. And now to our eyewitness photos. Uh, we start off with this one from Kaduna, which shows an accident. Our eyewitness reporter says the driver was moving at an alarmingly high speed. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on motorists to be careful on the roads and observe speed limits. Our second is from the Jebba Highway in Niger State showing bad portions of the road. Our eyewitness reporter wants the authorities to urgently address this. Our third image is from the Agbara axis of Lagos State showing a near fall in electricity pole. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the necessary agencies to fix the problem. And our final picture is from Kogi State, showing students of a tertiary institution staging a protest to demand for the reopening of their school, which our eyewitness reporter says has been shot for some time now. We do sincerely thank you for sending in those pictures as we ask that you keep them coming. The Kano Emirate Council has refuted the allegation that the Emir Muhammad Senussi II has spent 6 billion naira of the Emirates funds since he took over the traditional store. A senior official of the Emirate Council, Bashir Wali, at a press briefing in Kano today explained that the Emirate has only spent 2.9 billion naira since Mr. Sanusi emerged Emir in June 2014. Mr. Wali, who is also set to be in charge of the Emirate's finances, added that the Emir Sanusi inherited 1.9 billion naira and not 4 billion naira as reported in the social media. The explanations by the Emirate Council follows reports in the social media that the Kano State Anti-Corruption Agency is set to investigate the council for allegedly spending six billion naira in three years. In the meantime, a federal high court sitting in Lagos has struck out a 100 million naira suit instituted by Senator Musuliu Obanikoro and his family against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, over allegations of property seizure. Justice Abdulaziz Anka held that the suit lacked merit. The senator, his family, had dragged the EFCC before the judge over allegations bordering on what they considered a breach of their fundamental rights. Specifically, the plaintiffs had asked Justice Anka to make a declaration that the forceful seizure of their personal effects by the EFCC amounts to a gross violation of their rights. They also made a demand for an unreserved public apology, as well as a 100 million naira as general damages for the anti -graft, from the anti graft agency. But the EFCC argued that the Senator Obanikoro got suspicious payments from the Office of the National Security Advisors through some companies linked to the family. In his ruling on the issue, Justice Abdulaziz Anka held that the Obanikoro's application lacked judicial procedure and was incompetent. A diesel fuel tanker today crashed and burst into flames at the Ladipo end of the Ushua Diapapa Expressway in Lagos State, spewing thick spumes of black smoke into the air. In the area, and those are the pictures indeed, our correspondent Loretta Chiogo, who was at the scene of the incident, said a roadside mechanic who witnessed the accident narrated how a school bus filled with children narrowly escaped the explosion. Another eyewitness account has it that the tanker driver had been driving at a very high speed. 
when he lost control and veered off the road, hitting a culvert with a vehicle carrying about 3,000 litres of diesel before it burst into flames on impact. Fire trucks of the Lagos Fire Service reportedly arrived early on the scene but exhausted the supply of water without putting out the fire. It took the arrival of a second fire truck to extinguish the flames. The incident reportedly caused a massive gridlock on both sides of the expressway. You're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television. Let's quickly shift gears now, shall we, to our Abuja studios where Ivy Clem is standing by to take us through. Ivy. Hello, Gimba. The World Health Organization, WHO, has applauded Nigeria for making progress in its malaria elimination program by reducing malaria prevalence to 27% as against 42% in 2010. According to the National Professional Officer for Malaria at the WHO, Mrs. Linda Ozo, if the current efforts are sustained, Nigeria is capable of eliminating malaria in the nearest future. The WHO representative said this at a news conference in Abuja ahead of the 2017 World Malaria. Day. The 2015 Nigeria Malaria Indicator Survey reveals that 97% of the nation's population live in areas with high malaria risk, leaving only 3% of the population free. We'll Government officials and representatives of development partners are in this hall to examine the progress made with implementation of the National Malaria Elimination Program in 2015. The national coordinator of the program speaks on the activities of his team. We have participated in malaria, malaria, monitoring and evaluation review of malaria indicators uh, that will now feed into the Health System Development Plan 2017 to 2021. We have procured about 30 million uh, LLI, long lasting insecticide net procured through the law fund. The representatives of the World Health Organization, WHO, applaud Nigeria for reducing malaria prevalence rate. Nigeria has witnessed a lot of successes in malaria program, notably the decline in prevalence from 20, from 42% in 2010 to 27 percent in 2015. This is a very huge success. However, the country's chief of party for the malaria elimination project for the United States Agency for International Development attributes the progress to the diligent work of the Nigeria media. We owe so much thanks to the media for helping this fight against malaria through your words, through your articles, through your stories, keeping it on the radars of politicians, individuals in the House, and, and advocates all across the nation. So congratulations to the media. You have done incredible work. Thank you. Please. Although new malaria cases fell by 15 percent between 2010 and 2015 in Nigeria, 97 percent of Nigeria's population still live in areas of high malaria risk, making experts to call for upscale interventions. Though Nigeria may have recorded remarkable success in its fight against malaria, more still needs to be done to end the disease. To this end, the United States government has announced a $300 million commitment towards achieving this, while asking state governments to upscale efforts to this regard. The governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yari, as well as the Minister of Health, promised to ensure transparency and accountability in projects geared towards a reduction of the malaria scourge. Our correspondent, Gloria Mezioke, reports. And the tremendous leadership you provide. The, the struggle to make sector. malaria the history has been on for years, largely supported by foreign partners. Yeah. The meningitis epidemic is slowing down right now. Fight. The U.S. government has injected up to $300 million in the last few years to reduce the disease, but in spite of huge financial commitments, it appears injectable attestunate. The drug that kills a parasite is still out of reach of millions of Nigerians who need it. Ending the malaria in Nigeria will prevent more than 80 million illnesses and more than 300,000 related deaths each year. So this is why malaria prevention and control remain a major U.S. foreign assistance objective. In Nigeria, the annual U.S. government funding for malaria has been 75 million annually for the last four years. 
and also the need for the governor, government of Nigeria, both at the federal and the state levels, to put significantly more funding into primary health care. Recent statistics reveal that the Northwest region has the highest malaria prevalence rate by 37 percent, closely followed by the Northeast with 26 percent. Malaria ambassador and the governor of Zamfara State, as well as the Minister of Health, disclose how far they have been working to intervene, especially with funds from donor agencies. And we will account for every cobo, every naira, every dollar that you give to us. And if you mismanage the resources, you will cough it. Take malaria out of the table, the room, the environment in this country, many things will change. A maternal mortality and the fire mortality will significantly improve. The contribution of the workforce to economic development will also significantly change. All pregnant women are being given donates and drugs for free in all state government owned hospitals and other health facilities. I would like to assure that Zambra State Government will continue to sustain the fight against malaria. This year, the United States adopts the slogan, What is your role? Advancing support across the board. The consensus here is that eradicating malaria goes far beyond setting ambitious goals, but addressing the real challenges to achieve zero related malaria deaths by 2020. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Still on malaria, Ghana, Kenya and Malawi have been chosen as frontline states in Africa where the malaria vaccine will be introduced in 2018. According to the World Health Organization, the vaccine will help save tens of thousands of lives, but it is not clear if it will be feasible to use in the poorest parts of the world. It needs to be given four times, once a month for three months and then a fourth dose 18 months later. The WHO says this has been achieved in tightly controlled and well-funded clinics trials but it is not yet clear if it can be done in a real world where access to health care is limited the pilot will involve more than 750,000 children aged between 5 and 17 months when the news at 10 returns Lagos state government redeems a 57.5 billion naira bond the second tranche under its initial 275 billion naira program launched in 2008 that's on Business News. Do stay with us.